You are now listening to Nailed It, the orthopedic surgery podcast. You are now listening to Nailed It, the orthopedic surgery podcast. Cool. So, so say, you know, we've done our approaches, we've gotten down, we can finally visualize our frag fractures, uh, fragments, and it kind of comes time to fixation. What, I guess it's kind of slowly breaking it down. What, how do you decide what kind of plates that you're going to use for these or what are, are there some typical plate options for these distal humerus fractures? And then we can kind of go a little bit deeper from there. Sure. So I think this is a, uh, a controversy, you know, within uh, fixation of, of these injuries, and I think in 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 general, uh, there's there's two plating constructs that are used, and that's parallel plating, where you have a plate on the directly on the medial column, the right uh, directly on the lateral column, um, versus uh, perpendicular or orthogonal plating, where you have typically a direct medial plate. Um, and then a, uh, a posterior lateral plate. Uh, and so I, I think there's advantages, disadvantages to those, um, to both of those. Um, I think the advantage of uh, parallel plating, uh, there may be some biomechanical advantages, particularly in varus and torsion. Uh, it allows for, um, you know, as Strano just talked about a lot, is that sort of recreation of the Roman arch and the interdigitation of those long screws from the medial and lateral side. Uh, clinically, there's, there's not been shown to be a big difference between the, the two constructs. Um, but I think when possible, um, you know, my, my preference is for uh, parallel plating um, of these, these fractures. And, and when it comes to plate, like actual plate choice, do you go with a pretty like a 3.5 millimeter pre-contoured um, distal humerus plate, or do you go with a um, um, lock and compression plate, like DCP plate? What what kind of plate choice do you do you typically go, go for? Sure. So a lot of um, I you know I think regardless of the company, there's a variety of of, of implant companies that make uh, very good anatomic distal humerus plates. And, and, and typically, um, on the medial side, I'll use a, you know, a, a plate with the option for three, five screws proximally, um, and an anatomic plate on the, the medial side. And sometimes that'll extend down to the trochlea, sometimes just to the, the level of the medial epicondyle. Um, and, you know, again, there's, there's options for, um, anatomic or pre-contoured, um, uh, locking plates for the lateral side as well. Uh, but uh, there, there's also opportunities that you can, uh, you know, you can bend, uh, you know, bend a plate to fit, you know, to fit where you need. So I think there's, there's a variety of, of options, whether you're going to use a uh, specific, you know, pre-contoured plate um, or a, you know, three, five or a, 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 a mini frag type plate that you bend. And do you typically, I know you mentioned you use, you kind of your three, five screws proximally in the shaft. In the distal humerus, are you using uh, different? Are you using like two seven screws, or are you using you know smaller screws in the? So, yeah, depending on the 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 company, you know two three two four two seven, um, you know, in, for the for the screws distal to the fracture, um, the, that's typically the screw size um, that we're uh, that that I'm using for those. And you typically um, for the these you know the screws that are going into that distal fragment that are kind of getting that interdigitation of what you're saying, if, if we're doing parallel plating, are these all locking screws or are some of them cortical? How do, what is, I guess, what is, uh, are they, are they all lockers or, or cortical or is it a combination? Um, so typically proximal, uh, I'll, I'll use, uh, cortical screws, uh, and, and, and distal and articular fragments, um, uh, uh, typically polyaxial locking screws. Okay. Uh, either either two fours or or two sevens. Um, sometimes uh, particularly in the case of a you know with an articular split, uh, you can put an independent uh, screw across the articular surface. Um, and I think particularly in cases where there's there's comminution, uh, I think it's important that the positional screw and, and not to you know compress across that because you can narrow your trochlea. Uh, but 
but the, for the, in terms of the, the screws through the plate, uh, I, I typically would use lock screws and then locking screws in that area. Okay. And, and I guess as far as, um, the length of the plate, how do you know, how do you choose how far proximal you want the plate to go? Like I, I, read, I saw some things where they say when at least three holes proximal to the metaphyseal component, um, some, I mean, do you want three and then how do you, if you're doing parallel plating, do that you want both plates to end at the same level or do you want plate one plate higher than the other? Or what, I mean, any thoughts on that? So, yeah, that, that's an interesting question. And I think there's some, um, some conflicting biomechanic information, um, in general, uh, for each plate, I try to get three screws proximal to the fracture. Uh, and I try to end, um, I try to end the plates at different levels, uh, to avoid a, a stress riser. Uh, so I try not to have the plates end at the, um, at the same level proximally. Okay. And then, um, oh, that's, that's exactly what I was inside here as well. I was going to ask you, yeah, I already did. Um, and, and as far as your sequence so you go and you know say you have a really highly comminuted fracture do you have a typical sequence that you do you know i just put this here because this is something i read about you know i spread yeah. that so no people, I, yeah go ahead i think this is a really important um a really important part uh and, and I'll, I'll talk about this in the context of you know that there's a, a c-type fracture uh and, and we're going to proceed with um you know with with parallel plating uh, I'll start by um, trying to reduce the articular surface. Uh, so, you know, turn a, a, a C type into an A type. And typically that's depending on how much comminution and how many pieces there are. It's with a variety of, of um, small K wires, um, you know, 035, uh, 045 K wires to get your articular block, your articular segment into, um, you know, into one piece. Um, I think an important, important side note, I think when you're, when, when you're putting in wires, screws from the medial side, uh, I think very important, even if you, your nerve visualize protected, uh, to try to run that in and oscillate as much as you can, um, to protect the ulnar nerve. Um, uh, once you have your articular set segment, you know, provisionally reduced with K wires, uh, you try to bring that segment back to the, to the shaft, um, and hold that provisionally. Um, the next step, I think you can apply your plates both on the, um, the medial and the lateral column. Um, and I'll get provisional K wire fixation, both proximally and distally through the plates into the fragment. Um, and so now you have everything reduced. You have both your plates in place, you know, of, of where you want them, um, and I'll put a screw, a cortical screw in the oblong hole through both plates um, proximally and tighten them down, get locked screw fixation distally, you know, through each plate. And then I think a really important part of the, you know, really important step next is, is supracondylar compression. Um, and so because you have that screw in the oblong hole, you can loosen it. You can take a large point of reduction or paraticular clamp and get sort of individual compression through each of the columns and then tighten down your, your screws. And once you have that, you have, you know, a screw in proximally, a couple of screws in distally as well as your K wires, um, you know, your fracture's reduced, everything's in, you know, in good position. You have, meta you have compression across the, um, you know, the fracture, and then you can, can finish the rest of your, um, your fixation. And so those are the, the, the sort of general steps, provisional articular reduction, um, segmental, um, uh, compression or supracondylar compression, and then, you know, definitive fixation, sometimes you know, a little bit variable depending on how much your, uh, work, your articular surface needs to restore. Um, but those are the general steps that, that, um, that I follow for parallel plating. And, and when you're putting your, um, your K wires in, where did you say that you're you're starting medial and, and putting them in laterally when you can, just because you because you know where the nerve is, or no, uh, I, I think you know, it just depends on where you know where they they need to go. I think when you put wires in from the um, you know wires in from the medial side, um, I, I try to run those in on oscillate just as sort of an extra layer of protection from the nerve. Often um, you have 
good visualization and a lot of bone in the, the lateral side. And so you can run, um, you know, run K wires in from, um, you know, from across there as well. But um, no, I mean, I, I think it's, it depends on the case and depends on the fracture of where your, your provisional K wires have to go.